Welcome to Caribbean Connections, your weekly dose of Caribbean vibes, featuring poetry, cricket commentary, special guests, and more. I'm your host, Sirogeny, and stay tuned for an hour of great Caribbean programming. Morning, neighbor, morning. Morning, neighbor, morning. Morning, neighbor, morning. I don't want your knife in morning. When you've been a group, you've not been tell me morning. Now because your money don't your hustle for tell me man in why yeah Gio go girl away you go Lady Bunting walk over ya Why Rich how you doing I'll be on you too You know Pablo hey <laughs> hey Children, it 
you just see how they sing and I just really admire them. Ready sing? Rick, chick, 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 conga day. Rick, chick, 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 conga day. Lift off your hand, conga day. Lift off your leg, me say conga day. Wind up your waist, conga day. Jump up, jump up, conga day. Jump up, jump up, everybody. We run a coca down, run a coca down, something broke away, run a coca down, run a coca down, run a coca down, run a coca down, run a coca down. Run it! Uh, this one are uh, the hate, yo, yo. Ladies, Ladies are Rojanir. Rojanir. Bless up everyone. This is Chad and Ben from Jamaica here representing for the most, the host, Lady Sarojani with the Caribbean Connection Show. Hey, Pawa, 93.5 FM, CHMR, 11. I'm an no criminal, so get on your certain. But let me tell you, do If you never know, I'm an island man with an African culture. No drugs, no eat, I'm a bad. Good morning to you. Happy Friday, St. John's and Newfoundland and Labrador. Well, I don't need to tell you all, we got some weather going on out there. Please drive safely. There's a lot of rain. You can hydroplane. I want you to take your time, arrive safe and arrive alive. So, yes, I'm ordering you to be safe. We've got an awesome show ahead of us today. Thank you for tuning in to today's program. We are broadcasting live from the campus of Memorial University here in rainy and not too cold, though it's probably plus four out there, but rainy in the city of St. John's, Canada's, or actually New North America's oldest city, St. John's. You can reach us on chmr.ca online or 93.5 FM on your dial. Rogers 942 and Alliance 787. We have in the studio with us Jennifer Archer today, architect, adventurer, and instructor. So listen, y'all, stay tuned. We're going to kick off this awesome Friday with this track by Ken Professor Fillmore Penn in A minor. <laughs>
Welcome back. My name is Sarojini, and I am the host of Caribbean Connections. We have here in the studio with us Jennifer Archer. Jennifer, welcome. Thank you. I am so happy you can be here with us today. And listen, we just have a fascinating, a fantastic story, and also a very colorful one to tell. And I mean, it's so funny how we connected, actually, yeah. but, you know, my uncle always used to say, language will bring anyone closer, but you know what? You and I have found out food and music will too, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, Jennifer, um, <clears throat> I know you're an architect, an instructor, and an adventurer, and we're going to get into all of that. And with your diverse Caribbean, British, and Portuguese lineages, we will have a grand discussion. And we're going to learn how this has certainly shaped and influenced your life over time and that of your family. So let's get into okay. <laughs> the real colorful stuff. There and, we go. You know, you and I are the same. We always like to ask people, where are you from? What yeah. do you do? Yeah. What's your background and all of this? So 
I'm going to pose that question for you, and we can take it from there. So you were conceived during Carnival time in Trinidad and Tobago, or as we call it in the Caribbean, Bacchanal. So, Bacchanal. Uh, Bacchanal. So before we go on the fascinating uh, journey, we're going to link it all together because there is just so much to tell with your lineage, lineage. and we're going to start with mom and dad, who met in the Caribbean, yes, or Caribbean, <laughs> in Trinidad. They met in Trinidad. Go on, take it away, girl. Okay, my mom is English. She's from Big um, New Zealand. <laughs> New Zealand. I forgot where she's from now. You said Liverpool. Liverpool. <laughs> that's the one I'm looking for. Yeah. So my mother's from Liverpool, and uh, she went down to Trinidad to teach for two years at Presentation College. And my dad just happened to be teaching there at Presentation College. They liked each other. She got knocked up. <laughs> and they emigrated to Toronto, and I was born in Belleville, Ontario. Awesome. Now, um, we can go back just a little bit with your grandmother. Interestingly, she, her last name was De Silva. De Silva. And she was from where I was born and raised in Guyana. I know. I'm part Guyanese. I, I couldn't believe that. Girl, I look at you and I said, there ain't nothing wrong about you. <laughs> pasty, pasty white. No, I get that from my mother's side. But you told me an interesting uh, term that you used, that you were a reversed Oreo. Yeah, what I'm do you mean by that? <laughs> I'm white on the outside and black on the inside. <laughs> I love it. Or Indian on the inside, or yeah. Portuguese on the inside. Brown, black, white, Something yellow. brown on the inside. So tell us about uh, Nan and Pops then. What, what, what is they, or what are their lineages? Well, my mother's side is basically descended from Vikings. I haven't really traced a lot of that. But my father, on the other hand, his family just never seemed to settle anywhere. So uh, my grandfather was born in Barbados to uh, some Portuguese people who had emigrated down from the Azores, as it turns out. And uh, so then then he moved f to the gold fields in Guyana to work and met my grandmother, who was da Silva, um, Portuguese descent, and also there might be some uh, Amerindian in there as well, not sure. I can't tell from me. Mm -hmm. um, and then my grandmother and my grandfather moved to Trinidad, and they had eight children, and that's where my dad's from. That's how my dad got. Mm -hmm. And dad went to the University of the West Indies in Jamaica. In Jamaica. We call it UWI. Yeah. What did he UWI. do there? UWI. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he got his degree in physics. My mother also had a degree in physics from um, England, and so they were teaching presentation college together, physics. Mm -hmm. In Trinidad and in Tobago. Trinidad. Yeah. And that's where they met. And that's where you were conceived, yes. you know, in, in um, funny about that during Bacchanal, this happens a lot. Yeah, uh, you <laughs> Some, think, yeah. Something about that Caribbean blood and carnival, I'm telling you, you want to have a baby, go to the Caribbean. <laughs> I think rum also has a lot to do with it. Oh yeah, definitely. So now, uh, mom and dad, before you were born, came back to Canada. Yeah. Tell us uh, what happened then. Um, they gave birth to me in Belleville, and then after a year, they moved to Toronto, and um, that's, you know, and it, over time, the marriage didn't work out, so when I was 15 or 16, they broke up, mm -hmm. and um, I went off to university. Mm -hmm. And also, before we get into what you studied, what you're, you were undertaking your studies and education, Dad went to India. Yes. Would you like to elaborate on what he did there? Sure. Uh, my dad retired for about a second and found a job in India teaching mathematics at a Canadian school there. So he'd been working there two, three years, and I finished my architecture degree, and he gave me a ticket to come to India to visit for a month. So I went, and while I was there, the principals found out that I also have a degree in biology. So they asked if I wouldn't mind they needed a teacher for a January term. And would I teach grade 9, 10, uh, 11 biology, Canadian curriculum? Sure, why not? I don't have a teacher's background, but mm -hmm. both my parents were teachers, so sure. So I wound up staying in India for two years, after which time I moved to Kuwait, 
which I, I wouldn't recommend for your typical white woman. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And then I decided it was time to come home and start practicing architecture. So where in India did you live? I lived in Bangalore. How did you find your experience in Bangalore? I mean, India's population is over a billion. So back then it wasn't. So how did you cope with millions of folks in India, but not all in Bangalore? N no trouble. I mean, I'm just, I'm open to everything. So I just went, learned about the culture, changed my mind about a few things, learned how things really work over there and don't work over there. So it was a real eye-opener culture-wise. Mm -hmm. But I, I would go back in a second. Yeah. And I mean, the culture, the people, the food, food. talking about food, which yeah. brought us together and music. How did you find them? Curry spices, girl, and all them pepper sauce. <laughs> but I grew up on pepper sauce. I know. I so know. <laughs> the one thing I could not eat is was called um, uh, something toast. And it, all it was was chopped up green chilies on toast with butter. I, I never could eat that. That was just too much. My dad could scarf that down. No problem. He makes his own pepper sauce. So so that is quite international. Oh, he's very international. I mean, living and working in India for all those years. And he I mean, traveled everywhere. Yeah. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to play one of your favorite songs. It's an oldie, but, but a goodie. goodie. And it's by Lord Kitchener, and it's called My Wife's Nighty. <laughs> We'll take a short break, guys, and we will be right back. She came for one night with Kitchener. She seems of a decent character. But when I woke up in the morning, my wife pretty nighty was missing. Come back with me, white nighty. Cynthia, you know it's dishonesty. Come back with me, white nighty. I am going to charge you for last evening. She said she was cold and feeling sick. I thought I should be sympathetic. I took the responsibility to lend her my wife pretty nighty. Come back with me, white nighty. Darling, you taking a liberty. Come back with me, white nighty. I am going to charge you for last evening. <laughs> And went to bed feeling merrily But when I got up from the romance Looking for the girl, no appearance Come back with me, white nighty Cynthia, you taking a liberty Come back with me, white nighty I am going to charge you for last evening <laughs> She came over to study. Her father is a major in the army. I naturally had no suspicion when I heard the lady's position. Come back with me, white nighty. I am going to charge you for last evening. Come back with me, white nighty. Cynthia, you taking a liberty. <laughs> Expect to be back any moment. And what will be my explanation in facing this rough situation? Come back with me, white nighty. Cynthia, you taking a liberty. Come back with me, white nighty. I am going to charge you for last evening. <laughs> Welcome back. My name is Sarojini, and you're listening to Caribbean Connections. And we have here in the studio with us my friend Jennifer Archer. Um, we're talking about not only the Caribbean, more importantly, we are talking about her diverse Caribbean heritage. And I'm telling you, when I first saw this lovely gal, I'm like, Ain't nothing like that going on, let me tell y'all. <laughs> you can't, wait, wait, wait. 
You can't be Caribbean. You got to prove it. So food and music. And, and the accent. And the accent. Oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah, girl, you're from the Caribbean, all right? <laughs> so listen, uh, we're going to carry on here. Um, you came back to Canada after India and Kuwait teaching, yeah. having this wonderful experience, culture, life over there. I mean, there are ups and downs whenever you live and travel abroad. We should know Caribbean people are all over the world, you know. Yeah. So in nothing it's new It's hard for to us. find them here, though. Yeah, you know, I'm going to tell you something. They're here. You just got to find them. Yeah. I, I, I'm actually searching out everybody. Whoever I meet, I'm like, oh, my God, are you from Barbados? Where's all them Caribbean people, too? Y'all tell me. Me, too. Me, too. I so, need some food. You know what's going to bring them? Carnival. We got to think of a carnival for these people. They're all going to come out, right? We, we should do a carnival broadcast. I know, girls. So listen, keep that at the back of your mind. So you're back in Canada. You already had studied architecture at architectural school at uh, University of Waterloo University, very great university in Waterloo, Canada. And you decided to come back and practice uh, architecture. So tell us a bit about this path. So... Um I got a degree in biology, and when you graduate from an undergrad, you're like, well, what am I going to do with this? And a friend of mine said, you should apply for architecture school. So I thought, okay, I'll be an architect. And applied only to the University of Waterloo for architecture, and I luckily got in. And, uh, yeah, so my practice mostly uh, in the last few years was designing hospitals. So I... I would design mostly the clinical spaces inside. So the entire ter interior of the hospital I, would be my design. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm curious because waiting rooms, hallways, and such in medical spaces, I mean, sometimes you go in and you're literally walking on top of each other. Other, yeah. other times you have a lot of space. So when you're designing, give us some... Uh, three of the most important things you have to consider? Well, the very first thing is we get a group of people together that work there, usually the nurses, and we base a lot of our design on how they work, uh, what what needs to be close to them when they're dealing with a patient, what's got to be on the wall, that kind of stuff. So there's that, that's very interesting. And then also uh, furniture, furnishings, making sure that they are, you know, a lot of times I tried for environmentally positive buildings even if it meant it was only one thing i had to change i could change because a lot of people back then they didn't they, there was no green movement back then and so i if i could change one thing on a project like get rid of all the vinyl out of the the um the icu for the, P, the pediatric icu then that was like uh, a, a bonus that i that i was able to do that why get rid of the vinyl um vinyl in Preemies, uh, males, can cause sterility. Mm. So to get it out of the pediatric intensive care unit was very important. The only thing we couldn't change were the tubing. There had to be mm -hmm. vinyl. There were no, t no kind of tubing other than vinyl. So what would you replace the vinyl with? Oh, just better materials. Mm -hmm. Vinyl is very, very cheap. Uh, off gases, and uh, it can stink up an entire... I'm thinking about new car smell. That's mm -hmm. the vinyl you're smelling. So, and then what else did I like? I just, I liked doing the drawings. Mm -hmm. I, I just enjoyed the whole aspect, doing the drawings, going to a meeting with the clients, seeing what you had to change, go back, make it work. That's what I liked about architecture is I had to, you have to make it work. You mm -hmm. have to make it work within the budget and you have to make it work so that the clients are happy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I enjoyed that. A lot of this was done in Ontario, where you settled when you returned to Canada, and you met someone, and you and your partner um, had a beautiful, have a beautiful child together. But prior to that, um, you had a medical diagnosis which really put a damper on things, and you had to literally look at your life, restructure it, and think carefully what to go, what to do next. Um, do you want to talk a bit about that? Sure. When I was uh, 21, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. My mother has it. My grandmother had it, too. Um, 
and it for the most of my life it hasn't really bothered me. I would have the occasional relapse, but then uh, in when my early forties I had a relapse that I couldn't come back from. So mm -hmm. I couldn't work a forty hour work week, let alone a sixty hour work week. So I had to give up architecture, mm -hmm. and that was hard. And it takes. I mean, it's very easy to say, you know, when you work it out and you move on, but it takes years. So people who are newly retired, I feel your pain because mm -hmm. it takes years to get over the fact that you're not doing what you've done every day of your life kind of thing. Mm -hmm. so and, and I mean, you studied hard, you enjoyed it, and this is a whole restructuring of your life. A whole restructuring. What am I going to do with my life? Mm -hmm. You know. But something positive came about from this absenteeism from work. You had a very beautiful daughter, Lily. Lily. Right. So tell us a little bit about all of this. I mean, here you are with a medical diagnosis. You had to give up what you truly love to do mm -hmm. and raising a child. How, how did you go about all of this, Jennifer? Seriously, one day at a time. Mm -hmm. Seriously, I just, I try to think only about today. Tomorrow hasn't happened and the past is gone. So I've learned, I got to give a shout out to my peeps at Channel. That's the place that helped me with uh, my depression because 90% of people with MS also get depression. Mm -hmm. So uh, they, they helped change my life. It's a great place to go down and hang out and talk to like-minded people. And uh, so they're a big help. And I met you over there, yeah. and it's such a wonderful uh, place and space. There was a fireplace going, coffee, beautiful seats tables and I met some of the folks over there and they were all so wonderful. I'm like, I'm staying here for the rest of the day, guys. You yeah, it's can pretty relaxed. Me. It really is it's and I, I can, was and I can really understand what you are saying about when you're going through any form of mental illness. It's so important that the environment and the atmosphere is inviting yeah. and giving and loving and, and non-judgmental. Exactly. Yeah. And I certainly um, felt that. I mean, I, I wasn't going through what you all were going through, but or I'm not, but I certainly can relate if someone had to use this space. This would be a welcoming spot. It's wonderful. So for, you know, our listeners out there, if you're looking for information on C-H-A-N-A, N-A-L. N-N-A-L. N-N-A-L. And tell us what it stands for and who they can contact maybe to help with their anxiety or depression or just to go and hang out. There's a website for Channel. Um, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's, on, the, it's on the promenade. Uh, it's in the CNIB building on the first floor. So you, if you go to the CNIB building, just go in the front doors, turn left, and then there's a big, like someone's basement rec room basically mm -hmm. the couches and stuff like that mm -hmm. yeah and it's by kitty Vitty lake 70 the boulevard that's right that's the address so yeah. it's such a wonderful space guys if you're looking to hang out and just get some great help talk to people who are going through what you are this is the place to be so thank you for that jen and just to move back into um, your life with your work and Lily and all of that, I mean, you speak several languages, don't you? I speak Italian, some French and English. That's only three languages. Only but I can, three. I can swear <laughs> in a, a number of other languages and countries I've been to. Now, we are going to talk about how you ended up here in Newfoundland, and it seems like Newfoundland is the place to be. Like um, about four of my guests in the last year have our expats here in Newfoundland, and we've all been here a long time. So we're going to get back on that journey. But in the meantime, we're going to hear another favorite track, and it's one of your favorite singers, actually. Sparrow. Sparrow. Sorry, we're just having some technical difficulty there, guys. Um, give me one minute and we're going to cue this song up for Jennifer. And it is a track by Sparrow. <laughs> Sparrow 
76. I come out to wail. I come out to shake up my tail on a wonderful scale. And as male it is my fet, I want it to be first class. Joy, peace, love, pan, and man. For so many years on my pedestal, I have stood what I saw look so good. So tell them people, I am a statue in the heart of town. I like the way they play and I like the things they say. So for 76, you faith, I come in down, I come in down. All right. Hmm. I come in down, I come in down. Uh, look at here. I come in, I come in. Carnival, I break in my trance to come out and look for romance and to drink up and dance. Let me tell you in advance, I want to have a fair chance. I don't want to get involved with the law anymore, for a war is a war. So tell them people, Cipriani statue in the heart of town. Say, I like the way they play and I like the things they say. So for 76, you fail. I come in down, I come in down. I come in down, I come in down. I come in, I come in. Tell the man to put out the best and leave out the stress and commerce when he stage he contest. Cause I sure this is one year. All right, well tell me. You're jamming to CHMR 93.5. And I hope you like jamming too. Hey dear, take a listen at this. Oh, this. All these too. My name is Ugwede Ike Chuku. Join me every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. where we do everything Africa. From the music to the current news to the history, from the Horn of Africa up to the north to the west and down to the south. And again, back here to St. John's. That's every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. right here on the One African Show. A close second as that one gets belted down the ground. Just one. It's not good enough at this stage for India. They need more than that. This bowling is really high class. This is the over. This is where they need a target, Mitchell Marsh. Here we go. After securing a rare series win with a 3-0 performance against Afghanistan in the ODI matches, West Indies went into the T20 series brimming with confidence. They took an easy 30-run win in the first match as Evan Lewis kicked things off with a blistering 68 of 41 balls, taking West Indies to 164-45. Afghanistan were put on the back foot after losing two early wickets and despite starts in the 20s by three of the top order. Keswick Williams, three wickets for 17 in four overs, and sure the Afghanis never came close. Limit of India throughout the series is 309, 308. Afghanistan batted first in the next match, and despite a quick start, no batsman could get out of the 20s as they struggled to get to 147, a seemingly subpar score. If they're going to win this game, that man on But they did count on the following of 21 year old Karim Janat, who, after making Afghanistan's highest score of 26 with the bat, proceeded to tear through. 
the West Indies batting lineup taking five wickets for 11 runs. Back for two. He's made it. Good running. Dinesh Ramdan. 24 not out was the only score out of the teams for the West Indies and they were held to a paltry 106 to lose by 41 runs. With everything to play for in the final match, Afghanistan again lost two early wickets. But, but Ramalu, sorry, Ramanula Gorba single-handedly turned things around, smashing 70, 79 runs of 52 balls to take the score to 156 for eight. Jeez, hit that hard. Mitchell Marsh had absolutely no chance there to get a glove on it. Naveen al -Haq took three wickets for 24 runs in the West Indies dismissal response. This Dismal response and Shea Hope's 52 and Evan Lewis's 24 were the only scores over 11 as the Windy stumbled to 127 for 7 with barely a whimper. That's what he was trying, so 13 from the over. So after winning the T20 series 2 to 1, Afghanistan will go into the single test match next week with momentum and a slight psychological advantage. They should keep in mind, though, that while the West Indies are not the best in the world, this is Afghanistan's weakest format. It should be a really good match. The off-speed stuff for this bloke, they win it. Very hard to hit these slow balls. It's difficult. Brett, what are you sensing? Well, I hear a story from Ken Corsby. Cricket came in the jungle. Sunday morning right after church. Big, big crowd assembled. Donkey say me fuss, I bat in. You know I love me cricket. Crapper sit down behind the stump. Say all right, I keep in wicked. The rough and kangaroo at fine leg, snake down in the gully, umpire parrot in the tree. He say all right, fellas, are you ready? And the ones in the crowd start to sing very loud. If you hear them, hit the ball, donkey, hit the ball, cover, drive him and make him ball. Hook the man like Kali Charan and put him straight in the stand. Elephant turn and pick up the ball. He say, I open the bowling. Monkey say, boy, the size of you. If you say you're bowling, you're bowling. Well, elephant walk about half mile, and then he started running. He coming down like an express train, the whole blast in jungle shaking. When he see elephant coming down, oh, donkey start to shiver. Red ants hit him a couple bites. He say, man, bat and pads together. And then the ones in the crowd start to sing. Very loud if you hear them. Hit the ball, donkey, hit the ball. Cover, drive him and make him ball. Hook the man like Vivian Richard and put him straight out the yard. Elephant coming down like a horse. Jump up high and deliver. The ball come down like a thunderbolt and bust the bat into splinter. Liquid donkey, liquid crapo, liquid snake in the gully. Lick down giraffe and kangaroo and gone whistling down to the 
bong green. Well, the red ants lie down flat on the ground. He say, Lord, that elephant crazy. He must be thinking he's coat me wash. Or the man from Antigua courtly. And the ones in the crowd start to sing. Very loud if you hear them. Hit the ball, donkey, hit the ball. Cover, drive him and make him ball. Book the man like Brian Lara and put him out the pasture. You're listening to the Trade Winds, another one of Jennifer's favorite bands, oldies but goodies, and that was Cricket in the Jungle. And I'm going to tell you all, I'm not lying, she was dancing better than me too. Oh my gosh, my dance paled in comparison to you, girl. <laughs> so, all your wine now. <laughs> yeah, you got to really wine. When you're from the Caribbean, if you can't wine, something wrong with you, something right? Something wrong with your hips. <laughs> And uh, before that, b- before the cricket break, we heard actually Sparrow a coming down, and that is such a favorite phrase in the Caribbean. A I com- come in. And two hours later? I still come in. Still- <laughs> Stop coming and come. <laughs> this is way too funny. <laughs> Listen, we're going to take a short break, and we will be right back with Jennifer. <laughs> Toronto, this is DJ Eruption. You're listening to Sroji from Caribbean Connections. Peace out. Run it! Uh, this one, uh, the hit, yo, yo. Greetings, everyone. This is Troy and Ben from Jamaica, and you're listening to 93.5 CHMR FM. Or check us out online at chmr.ca. No jokes, no in on my back. The best of salsa, merengue, bachata, cumbia, reggaeton, and underground tropical beats. With DJ Chamba on Ritmo Latino. Saturdays 2 to 4. Saturdays 2 to 4 p.m. Exclusive to 93.5 CHMR FM. Exclusive to 93.5 CHMR FM. I'm David Suzuki. How far away is your next meal? The average lunch or dinner travels 2,400 kilometers to get to your table. Eating local means eating fresher and combating global warming. The future is in your hands and on your table. Think globally. Eat locally. Eat your way to a healthier planet and a healthier you. Find out how at davidsuzuki.org. Check out the Friday Morning Markout every Friday morning at 8 a.m. on CHMR 93.5 FM. I know there's something in the whip of your smile. I get emotion from the look in your eyes. Welcome back. 
My name is Sorogeny. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> I'm getting all choked up here, Jennifer, <laughs> because of your dancing. This girl can oh. dance, let me tell y'all. But here we are. Um, you've really traveled around the world, and I think you said 26 countries. Uh, and counting. Yeah. Wow. I can just imagine how all of this has certainly shaped your life, plus the Caribbean heritage. So we've got a few minutes left and I really want to know how all of this experience living abroad, the exposure to so much has shaped your life and the life of your family. I think I've become, I'm, I'm not judgmental. I mean, I've seen so much cruelty and poverty in the world um, and I've come to understand why it's there um, and not pass a judgment on it. Humans are not the best to each other. But um, just having a background like I have and seeing what I've seen, it doesn't matter what culture you put me down into, I probably will assimilate. I always, uh, whenever I go to a new country, I try their uh, candy, their cigarettes, their local alcohol, and I learn how to usually how to swear in their language. Cause oh, you know, yeah, we yeah. can't forget that. Yeah. <laughs> So um, for people or folks wanting to experience and do what you've done, giving up a lot, studying here, but then working abroad and coming back, what advice do you have for them? Just be open, uh, think about only today, and just try and experience everything that's there. Don't close yourself off from it. Because the food, you will always find food in another country that tastes good. Just don't go there and look for our North American food. Go mm -hmm. there and embrace the culture. And I think that's why I've had such a good time because I say yes to pretty much anything. Do you want to go here? Sure. Mm -hmm. And I'll go. Check it out. Try it out. And here in Newfoundland, we certainly have a diverse community. Yeah. I have come to find out, too, and learn, as you know. So being here is like being around the world. Would you not agree? Uh, well, I'm originally from Toronto, so that that's diverse when yeah. I, when i feel like a minority i really i don't know why i enjoy that i like being the minority mm -hmm. in in a culture yes and here it's your home now you mm -hmm. have your daughter here your family yeah. and things are moving along you're taking care of yourself yeah so that's awesome for you well i'm training right now to become a yogi and inst yoga instructor so in a year i'll be a yogini Awesome, and you're enjoying it, I yes, gather. Yes, yeah. Well, I'm finding it very useful in myself, my own body, with the, having the MS and chronic pain. Uh, I've just found it so liberating that I never thought I could be an athlete, and I actually can be an athlete, even with the MS, provided I work out in a cold room where it's cold outside. Yeah, so it's just been eye-opening, and I want to share that with other people who have the same problems that I do once I'm once I finish my instruction course. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, thank you so much for being here. It really was my honor and my pleasure. <laughs> it was my honor, and this oh, was great. Man. And I get to see you dance again. Uh, oh, no, I have to dance again. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. We are going to close it off. And before I go, a special thank you to Jennifer and, of course, to all of you. Thank you for tuning in to today's program. And a shout-out to wherever you're listening from, however you got here. Thank you, thank you, thank you around the world. Stay well and healthy. Take care of yourselves and of each other. I hope to see you again next week. We're going to start our Christmas program here at Caribbean Connections next week. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. You're welcome, Jennifer. It really was an honor. And we are going to hear a favorite soca of yours, Lucy by Destra Garcia. All your wine now. Yeah, we all got a wine. Take care, everybody. Have a great weekend. And... Bye for now. We not back now. I grew up as a real good girl, always home, don't go nowhere. As soon as I was introduced, the carnival to say I lose. All down on the ground, walking, walking up the bottom, and it dragging, dragging all over tongue, and they say I lose. It was never a party at my school bazaar.
This is 93.5 CHMRFM.